Thank you. It's the Ron and David show. So we knew it have it would happen sooner or later. Right? I've always looked like Ed McMahon, so it's okay. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, I'll do my Karnak impersonation in a few minutes, but uh, it's always interesting to have one of these events and have the various strands of people's lives come together. Uh, Ron is somebody who's, whose life has touched many different parts of Arkansas, Little Rock, and uh, the whole country and the world, indeed, uh, which is not an exaggeration. But it's interesting to see different parts of those lives come together, and this is one of those occasions. Ron is uh, uh, many things, uh, and, but he's... We're talking today mainly about his life as a collector of Arkansas-related uh, movie posters. We're going to talk a little bit about collecting in general, but also some things about Ron's life. Uh, many of you know that Ron's a native of Little Rock. He's a graduate of the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. He was a sports writer for Arkansas Gazette for several years. He was in the Air Force. Some of you may not know he won the Bronze Star for his service in Vietnam. Uh, he is uh, somebody who's uh, been a volunteer for a million different things, uh, lots of charitable connections in, in this, this community and, uh, and beyond. He's also somebody who has been a mentor to many people in this room, many people who are not in this room who are out being busy doing the thing Ron taught him to do, which is <laughs> uh, public relations, advertising, and general goodwill uh, scattering. Uh, Ron is, is somebody who's who's, uh, I often comment, he's a force of nature, and anybody who's known him for more than a few minutes knows that is true. Uh, he also is the former uh, chair and CEO of Cranford Johnson Robinson Wood. He's the R in CJRW. Again, we're here today to talk mainly about movie posters, and the, the, po the show that uh, Catherine talked about just across the street, the Arkansas Studies Institute building, Concordia Hall, a far end in the, in the oldest building. Go see that show, it's truly amazing, 35 posters, with something having to do with Arkansas. Sometimes you have to read the, you have to read the narrative to figure it out, but uh, it's fun to try to figure those things out. But I want to ask you, Ron, how did you get into collecting? Well, I, I've always loved collecting because uh, I think it honors the past. Uh, and that is what I've, al I've always collected things, only things that I like. And it honors the past and reminds us all of the history of so much uh, that is in everything, and there's so much to learn uh, from collecting. That's how I initially got involved with stamp collecting and a little 25 cent thousand stamp uh, packet that you could get at Foley's department store. There are three different kinds of collecting. There uh, are the collectors themselves who are trying to get one of the best of each they're the accumulators, and the accumulators are people who just collect everything that they possibly can as fast as they can. And then they're the investors, and uh, they are the people who are trying to, to ride the bubble. Hmm. And uh, uh, so that's how it all started. And, and uh, as my daughter-in-law has told me, Ron, after you go, you're going to have to do something with these collections because we want, don't want our house to be your house. <laughs> uh, Ron's house is a bit of a museum, uh, and uh, it is. But it's, it's my museum. It's your, it's, yeah, After all these right. years, it's <laughs> my museum. So if you're not around to be the curator, that's going <laughs> to need to do. Yeah, uh, you uh, you've told me some stories about collecting, and particularly about movie posters, and sometimes people. Uh, of course, buy them off of auction sites, but right. sometimes they find them in other ways, sometimes surprising. One of the most interesting stories about movie poster collecting came back in the uh, 70s when a couple in uh, Michigan Indi City, Indiana, bought a fixer-up house for $20,000 in a government auction. And they were going to fix it up and rent it, and they got to tearing into it, and they, as they got to tearing into the walls, they find, started finding movie posters. And so they checked it out and found out that the manager of the movie theater in Michigan City, Indiana, had taken the posters over the years, brought them from the theater, and put, gone up in the attic and put them in the walls as insulation, okay? <laughs> Long story short, a Chicago uh, poster dealer named Dwight Cleveland came to help them. Um, before it was over, 
They found 8,000 movie posters during the classic movie period. They made $3 million <laughs> on a $20,000 house, and they only kept one poster, and that was the 1934 movie, We're in the Money. <laughs> so so uh, I'm not encouraging you to go out and buy a, a fixer-upper today, but m there are movie posters everywhere if you just start looking, and uh, it's fun. Of course, part of the situation is a lot of these posters were just intended to be up for a few weeks exactly. and then uh, disposable, so to speak, and nobody... Movie posters were never designed for collecting, uh, and that's one of the most interesting things about them. You know, uh, there's probably a little bit more than 100,000 movie posters in the world today. And, and Ron uh, has 94,000 of them. Yeah. <laughs> Movie posters were never made to be collected. I mean, they were just part of advertising. Uh, and they came, uh, you know, most uh, movie posters before 1980 were, were always owned by the film companies themselves. And that's why movie posters look folded before 1980 because they were shipped around the country in the film cans, in the film cans, and then they put up the movie, and then they put it back into the thing and moved on. Uh, and there were such things as movie poster exchanges for the various studios. One thing that I always w wish I had done was in 1980, they sold the Memphis Movie Poster Exchange that handled a five-state area. It had a million movie posters in it. Uh, from 1980 back to the 1920s, and they bought it for $100,000. It's got to be worth at least, at least $50 million. So, uh, uh, you know, when, when you also talk about movie posters, you know, there are, uh, the ones that are in this exhibit and the ones that I collect are called one sheets. They're 27 by 41, the kind that we've always seen in front of the movie posters. But they get down to lobby cards, which are 11 by 14, and inserts and window cards, and they, meet, make, they come as big as 24 sheet outdoor posters. So uh, movie posters uh, come in about 12 different sizes, and uh, the kind that I collect are the most common, which are, are 27 by 41. Talk, I don't want to leave out Carl Malden. Tell us how you became friends with Carl Malden and what that friendship has meant to you. Oh, well, goodness. Um, you know, we lost Carl at 97 on July the 1st, 2009. Carl was a very, very interesting man and a, a, a wonderful, wonderful man that I met when I went on the uh, Federal Stamp Commission. Uh, and Carl was representing uh, Hollywood. Uh, on it, and uh, he was just a fascinating guy, a, a guy that you would just love the minute that you met him. And of course, um, Carl uh, was always a character actor. Uh, he says, you know, that's the only, I want to be a working man's actor. Uh, uh, this is the way you have a career that goes 60 years, uh, where you don't go up and down. And of course, he was always known for his nose. <laughs> You know, his big bulbous nose, which it depended upon the day as to whether he wanted to be kidded about it or not. <laughs> but he used to kid his audiences when he gave a speech by saying, I'm the only man in Hollywood who can get handicapped parking because of his nose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Carl uh, and I became good friends. Uh, I just talked with Mona, his his uh, wife of 70 years on Sunday to wish her a happy new year. Um, uh, and Carl and I went lots of places and I was honored uh, in 2005 to push through legislation through the Congress and get the president to sign legislation where we dedicated a post office that <coughs> Carl used in Hollywood and called it Carl Malden Station. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had a picture of that audience because there were 32 Academy Award winners there. Talk about a nervous time to speak <laughs> when, when Kirk Douglas is on the front row. Uh, but uh, uh, Carl is a wonderful guy, and I won't take the time to tell the story, but um, 
Um, interestingly, uh, Carl attended Arkansas College in Batesville for two days <laughs> on an athletic scholarship for basketball, uh, but he left the college after two days when he realized that it, in order to get a full scholarship to play basketball, he had to play football too, and he says, I've already had my nose broken once. <laughs> yeah. Of course, a lot of your collecting has focused on your love of Arkansas and of Arkansas history. You bet. Uh, Ron has a great collection of Arkansas-related sheet music, for instance, pillows, you name it. Uh, but in, in this exhibition, your love of movie posters and your love of Arkansas history come together. That's exactly right, and my love of the movies. Uh, I mean, when I was a child, I really, I was one of those kids who always went to the Saturday matinee. How many of y'all ever went to the Saturday? Saturday? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, in 1949, when I was six, I went, it cost a dime. And you got a box of candy when you went in, and there, were t there was a Roy Rogers movie and a Gene Autry movie, and some cartoons and coming attractions and a travel log and a cereal. Now, that's a pretty good deal for a dime, and it was also the best babysitter in America. <laughs> but, um, so my love, my love for movies, movie posters, and uh, Arkansas all tied in, mm -hmm. and people have been encouraging me for years to do it, this exhibit, so I went ahead and did it. Looked through my collection, found that there were 94 movies that had in Arkansas collection. The head of the Butler Center um, would only come forward with 35 frames. What's wrong so, with that guy? And I, I don't know. I, we need to talk to Bobby Roberts about him. <laughs> but, Do something about but, that. Uh, 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 David and I have already talked about if they want to have another movie poster exhibit, whether we're going to call the exhibit Son of Ark in the Dark or Revenge of the Ark in the Dark. I definitely prefer Revenge of Ark in the Dark. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. Tell us about the title, Ark in the Dark, and the logo. Well, um, uh, the logo was done by Robert Burnham, who's senior art director at CJRW, and he is a, a, one of the most phenomenal creative talents I've known. He did six logos, and this is the one that we selected. And um, it took me a while to come up with... Uh, the title of the exhibit, because I didn't want to call it just something that other people had used. So Ark in the Dark was the way to go. Now, uh, my, my good friend Mike Barrier, who's here. Mike, hold up your hand there. Uh, the, 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 most, the leading authority on cartooning in the world, uh, but also my greatest critic, so, uh, has already criticized me for the fact I heard that, 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 uh, that uh, Arkansas is now AR. The postal abbreviation. Not ARC. And I told him, I said, well, I used creative license, something that you've never had in your life. <laughs> Instead of R in the DAR. <laughs> Mike is one of the great film historians yeah. right here within our midst. And has, if you haven't read his authorized biography of Walt Disney, it's, it's really fascinating and is the only authorized biography. He worked on it for 40 years. My yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Uh, copies are not available in the back, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk some about the posters. And the, we have several groups of them. There are, uh, we've got 20 of them today. The show has 35, so you'll see a pretty good slice of them today. But the first group is important directors. And let's talk about this first one. The story of Dr. Well, Wilson. this is this is the first uh, movie poster of the first movie in Arkansas, which was filmed in Arkansas in 1926, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and it was filmed in Helena, uh, and uh, it was by Universal Studios, and it took them two years to do it, and it ran for more than 30 years. This is a 1958 re-release of it, and the interesting thing about it are two things. One is, I, di I di didn't ever realize that Uncle Tom's Cabin was the best, after the Bible, the best-selling book of the 19th century in America. Um, and, and the second thing is that when they came to Helena to film, uh, the United Daughters of the Confederacy held a meeting and wanted to run them out of town, and they did after about four days 
And um, I don't know if there's any connection, but the steamboat that they came to burned down when so they got to Memphis. So uh, prices were paid for this movie. Yeah, yeah. And then there, were, there was a group of movies that I've always thought was interesting that was done by major directors. Yeah. And uh, the story of Dr. Wassel was made by Cecil B. DeMille. It premiered here in August of 1944 at the Arkansas uh, Theater. Uh, Cecil B. DeMille was here uh, for the world premiere. Uh, Dr. Wassel was from Little Rock. He lived on, in, on Scott Street. He was born in 1890. Uh, at the beginning of World War II, he uh, led a group of natives in Java out of a jungle as a public health officer. And uh, FDR referred to him in one of his, his first fireside chaps, uh, chats after Pearl Harbor. And uh, Cecil B. DeMille went to the president and said, sir, my contribution to the war effort is I'm going to tell the world the story of Dr. Wassel. And they did, and Dr. Wassel was at the premiere, and uh, some of his relatives are still living here in Little Rock. If you've never seen the story of Dr. Wassel, uh, get it and see it. Uh, he really is a very famous man from Little Rock that a lot of people don't know. Another director is Elia Kazan. Uh, this is Face in the Crowd, a movie that was made in 1957. This was Andy Griffith's first movie. Uh, it was Walter Matthau's second movie. Um, uh, Elia Kazan, of course, uh, has won more awards than just about any director uh, in, our, in our time. Uh, and uh, he filmed a portion of this movie in Piggott uh, and Pocahontas, but mostly in Piggott in 1956. The interesting thing about that is that uh, the people in the town uh, w uh, came out, about three or four hundred of them, three days in a row for the filming to be in a fairground scene. And Kazan said that I'm not going to pay you an actor's fee to come. I'm going to build the town a, a community swimming pool. And that's what he did, and that's what the swimming pool in Piggott is still about. <laughs> Um, okay, Bloody Mama. How many people have seen Bloody Mama? Now, all right. They're mostly in the back of the room. Watch those people. <laughs> uh, watch those people. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the theme line on this wonderful movie by Roger Corman, uh, a great B-picture mogul, is the family that stays together slays together. Okay? Um, uh, it was shot in Mountain Home. Uh, and uh, in 1970, and in Scott. Uh, importantly, it had its world premiere in Little Rock, and uh, interestingly, Robert De Niro, this was his third movie, and he's listed on the poster, and also listed on the poster is Robert Walden. Robert Walden uh, 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 is a very noted actor, and uh, perhaps you remember playing a young reporter, Joe Rossi, on the Lou Grant television series. And the interesting thing about that today is that he lives on Petty Jean Mountain, that he is the husband of the president of the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute, Christy Carpenter, and uh, I hope that sometime he'll come down to Little Rock and see his name up in the, in the Butler Center. Um, Boxcar Bertha. Who would have, who have seen Boxcar Bertha? All right, the same people who saw Bloody Mama. Also in the okay. back. It's all this. Um, uh, the key thing about this is that it was filmed in Camden. It was filmed at the Reader Railroad, and it was directed, the first movie ever directed, by Martin Scorsese. Um, and... Uh, Scorsese even has a scene in the movie where he plays kind of a bum and a bar scene in it. You'll have to watch the movie to see it. Uh, and the other thing uh, that I've talked to people who worked on the movie is that the love scenes between Barbara Hershey and David Carradine were not acting. Um, well, they were acting of a third kind. Um, okay. 
uh, what are we going to look at next? We're now going to early images and stereotypes of Arkansas. Absolutely. For 20. You know, one of the, one of the things that has shaped the image of Arkansas uh, over the years has been the movies of, of people made by Arkansans and, and shown about Arkansas. Uh, Bob Burns was from Van Buren, Arkansas. He had a career of about 47 years. Uh, he was on the radio with Ben Crosby. Uh, he made several movies, uh, and he had his own radio show uh, up uh, in the 40s. Uh, Bob Burns uh, made uh, The Arkansas Traveler, which had its premiere here in 1938 at the Pulaski Theater over on 3rd Street, and it's a story about a guy who's traveling the country kind of as a journeyman printer, kind of like an early Mark Twain, who comes and saves, saves a town because he gets rid of the corrupt mayor and then, of course, moves on. This uh, poster, by the way, uh, the Butler Center is in this building across the street, Catherine mentioned earlier, and this poster, Ron let us uh, enlarge it, and there's a version of it, uh, if you get out on the east side of these Arkansas Studies Institute buildings across the street, we have some uh, things that are like billboards. And we have the Fletcher Coffee and Spice Company, which operated in that building for a while, and some other things, Rock Island Line. And this is one of the things we blew up to simulate billboards. And so, so if you get way out on the other side of the building, you can look up and see this. Swing your lady. Now, um, I don't know if you can tell but the guy down here at the bottom, the gentleman down here at the bottom, playing the, uh, it says, Arkansas Jazz. A-R-C-A-N-S-A-W Jazz. And look who starred in this movie, Humphrey Bogart. And you know, now, Humphrey Bogart said this was the worst movie he ever made. <laughs> and, and, uh, and the critics agreed with him. Um, uh, but what does it have to do with Arkansas? Well, uh, besides having Arkansas jabs on here, the lady in the center here is who's played by Lois Fazenda uh, uh, is Sadie Horn, a blacksmith from the Arkansas Ozarks who... Uh, um, uh, I'll have to tell you very quickly because this movie has never, thank God, come out on DVD. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Humphrey Bogart plays a wrestling promoter and it, his car gets stuck and an Arkansas woman blacksmith lifts him out, the car out of the mud, and he tries to promote a wrestling match between Sadie Horn and uh, his, his fighter, Atlas Soskopoulos. <laughs> and unfortunately, Humphrey failed because Sadie and Atlas fell in love. <laughs> Down in Arkansas, uh, you know, they love to, to make fun of Arkansas, and that's why they spelled S-A-W. But of course, there were a group of people in Arkansas of, uh, who always thought that the, the name of Arkansas should be S-A-W. And this is a Republic picture. Uh, and you can see the wonderful image of the hillbillies up here. And the story of this is about a guy who comes uh, and tries to build a government dam and, and, f f and form a lake. And the people in, in the town try to run him out of town and get right, rid of them foreigners, and, f foreigners. and um, of course, uh, this is him on the porch, and he falls in love with the farmer's daughter, and the lake gets built. You know, God bless it down in Arkansas. <laughs> Lum and Abner, gosh almighty, Lum and Abner, you know, uh, are from western Arkansas, uh, they are two of the most famous people to ever come from Arkansas. They star, they're graduates of the university, uh, and uh, they, they uh, are Chet Luck and Norris Goff, uh, and they're from a town that uh, uh, was Pine Ridge, Arkansas, 
They were on the road, uh, they were made seven movies. This one was made in 1944, uh, and it's uh, kind of a bad movie. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Abner falls in love with Zazu Pitts. Now, if you remember Zazu Pitts, you know that that's kind of iffy. Um, <laughs> but but they, they were at the Jot 'em Down store, Dick Huddleston's Jot 'em Down <clears throat> store in Pine Ridge, Arkansas. And interestingly, the, the, um, the, the, the guys made up Pine Ridge, Arkansas. But when uh, the president was here, President Roosevelt was here for the Arkansas Centennial in 1936, they had a Lum and Abner television, a radio show that was from the Capitol steps with the president there. And the mayor of Waters, Arkansas came and renamed his town Pine Ridge. And today you can go to Pine Ridge and see it. I'm from Arkansas. Now, who's ever seen this? Has anyone ever seen this? <laughs> Don't. Um, <laughs> no, this is a 1944 movie. Uh, this movie is a uh, classic Arkansas corn pone right here. <laughs> uh, the storyline is very thin. Uh, it's from the legendary town of Pitchfork, Arkansas. And uh, in Pitchfork, uh, a sow gives a wor uh, has a world record number of piglets. <laughs> and people come from all over the world to see it. And so they put on a show and, uh, you know, and it has Jimmy Wakeley from Arkansas and the Pied Piper and the Sun, the Milo twins, uh, Carolina Cotton and all that. And it just is really just kind of a country and western variety show with hits in it like uh, Pitchfork Polka, uh, You Are My Sunshine, and my favorite, I Love to Yodel. <laughs> Ron they wondered does. why we thought they were com we were country bumpkins. This uh, the good thing about these this group of films though is it gave C C D R W a lot of work because you had a lot of image problems to overcome for the state. Because... Like a, like a lawyer, we like problems. <laughs> That's right. This next group is, and we're going to have to pick up this pace a little bit okay, here. Okay, I'll show uh, These are, are Arkansas people who produced or had something to do, speaking of image Legend problems. of Boggy Creek uh, <laughs> was made in the early 70s by Charles Pierce. Everybody's heard of the Falk Monster, the Southern Sasquatch, and he made this film for $25,000. He made 25 million from it. Can you imagine that? <laughs> uh, it's not very good, and it's really not much about the monster. It's about the people living in the swamp down there. <laughs> the town that dreaded sundown is really a true story um, uh, that was that was made by Charles Pierce uh, in Texarkana in 1944, 46. There was a series of murders there called the Moonlight Murders. And five people were killed on Lover's Lane there. And this movie, starring Ben Johnson, uh, they never caught uh, the people. Uh, interestingly, this film was shot in Garland, Arkansas, which I'd never heard of Garland, Arkansas. But it's right in Miller County, not, uh, about 30 miles from Texarkana. And interestingly, Barbara Pryor, our former first lady, was the script supervisor on this film. Speaking of Barbara Pryor. She made, she made this film as executive producer in 1977 uh, uh, called Wishbone Cutter. And uh, it starred Don Baker, who played Buford Pussard mm -hmm. and, and Walking Tall. This film also... Uh, had a great friend who was an advertising executive in Little Rock named Bob Gennepin, and he played a, a Confederate veteran soldier. Speaking of friends. Too scared to laugh. Now, Gary Jones in the red shirt right over here produced this movie uh, in 1989, and, and uh, uh, Gary is a fabulous filmmaker, one of the best advertising men that ever lived in Arkansas. 
and uh, has been a cinematographer all over the world. Uh, interestingly, Craig O'Neill's son, uh, who is the broadcaster, of course, here in Little Rock's son appears as a child star in this movie. Mm -hmm. Sling Blade. God bless Sling Blade and Billy Bob Thornton in 1996. This movie was made in Malvern and Little Rock and, and, and uh, in that area. Uh, Billy Bob was from Malvern uh, and uh, he played Carl Childers. And the line was, sometimes a hero comes from the most unlikely place. Uh, the film was made for $890,000. Uh, and uh, I think is a classic movie. It is a movie that you need to go back and look at again because it's really wonderful and it's a great story. And um, I think that, that uh, Billy Bob Thornton certainly deserved the Academy Award that he got for writing yeah. it. Yeah. Next group is uh, some uh, pieces of films that have uh, various things to do with Arkansas. Okay, Jimmy Wakeley's from Manola, Arkansas in Howard County. Uh, Jimmy Wakeley was king of the cowboy jukebox. Uh, and he made films in the 30s and 40s and 50s. And he was a cowboy star and always had a guitar, giving Gene Autry quite a run for his money. And uh, he made this film in 1945 along with about 37 other B-Mick movie pictures that they made in about three weeks. <laughs> um, God bless, here's a picture of Carl Malden, he even signed it for me. The Hanging Tree, uh, The Hanging Tree was made in 1959 and with Gary Cooper and Maria Schell and Carl Malden and a young actor making his debut who was from Little Rock named Ben Piazza. And Ben Piazza was an actor who uh, then had a career as an actor and a director for over 30 years. He was the son of Sam Piazza, who, where most of us have taken shoes to be repaired over the years. And Chris Piazza, uh, the, uh, the judge here in Pulaski County, is his uncle. True Grit. A lot of Arkansas connections here. Of course, it was written by Charles Portis uh, from Little Rock, and uh, uh, who lives in Little Rock now, but it was for originally from El Dorado. Uh, and uh, Glenn Campbell from Delight, Arkansas. Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this was Glenn's first movie. And uh, he's a very, very nice guy. I've got the, pl the pleasure of doing some work for him and this movie of course is quite a classic and uh, and uh, Bridges just made a remake of this which is quite good too. <laughs> Melvin and Howard, uh, God bless, here is Mary Steenburgen and one of her third movie role where she won the, the, uh, the, the uh, Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. In 1981, Melvin and Howard is a uh, fictional or possibly true story about uh, Howard Hughes and a milkman from Las Vegas who gets uh, $60 million in Howard's uh, will. Uh, you never know, but she does have the baby. <laughs> this, uh, we want to just touch briefly on uh, Arkansas's role in kind of movie innovations, particularly this You bet. Well, I mean, you know, uh, there have been lots of movie innovations that have come from our parents. And so the first real cowboy star, and I, I can't afford one of his movie posters, so I didn't show one, is Bronco Billy Anderson from Pine Bluff. And he was the first cowboy silent movie star. Um, I showed this one because I have met this man James Niehaus was the cinematographer and the producer of this film in 2009, but is one of only about 27 films that he's done on IMAX. You know, IMAX, uh, there's only one IMAX theater in Little Rock now, and um, uh, the, that 70 millimeter uh, IMAX technology did not 
get developed until 1970, That's, which is hard to believe, really. And that in the last 40 years, there have been over 500 movie theaters, IMAX movie theaters in 46 countries. Uh, James Niehaus, who is the cinematographer on this, is known as one of the best IMAX cinematographers in history. He is from Paris, Arkansas. Uh, he is uh, somebody that we at Cranford Johnson Robinson Woods knew because uh, he came to Arkansas uh, to film a, a seven-minute film on IMAX uh, in, in Little Rock. And it used to show out at the Aerospace Center. And uh, hopefully it'll be shown again. Interestingly, here's a guy from Paris, Arkansas, who has shown over 120 astronauts from all over the world how to shoot IMAX film from space. You know, and, uh, and one other person that we wanted to talk about today is Greg Smith. Greg Smith is from El Dorado. He has a degree from the University of Arkansas. He's written books, he's written movies, he's worked for Walt Disney Productions. Uh, he, there is one of his posters from Britain uh, uh, in the exhibit called Persons Unknown. And Craig Smith and Diane Sutherland are two of the neatest people that I know. And um, uh, Craig is now writing a play out in Foxcroft. So who knows, we may see another movie uh, yet. Uh, <clears throat> great. We uh, have a few minutes for questions. I want to say a couple of things first. I've sp finally spotted my colleague Colin Thompson. Uh, Colin uh, put the show together for the Butler Center. Absolutely. And Colin, if you stand up and let people see you. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, Colin also spent a lot of quality time in Ron's movie poster vault. <laughs> and uh, Oh, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. We did, and uh, Catherine Heller and Chris Stewart and Adam Beck did a lot of technical work today. I appreciate your help with that, as well as Gary Jones. Uh, I want to ask a, the first question. And can I add my thanks? I'm not, I don't know. Okay. No, no, to my thanks <laughs> to Skip Rutherford He's back for there. being one of the sponsors in yes. the Clinton School here today and being one of the inspirations for this exhibit over the years because he, he, we're old fraternity brothers, and he's been pushing me to do this for years. As another good friend, Rita Harvey from the Cox Center, who, um, who said, you've got to do it for Arkansas so that people will be able to see, it, it will be able to see um, another aspect of Arkansas they've never seen. I, I, I do want to say this. I, uh, for a year, I lived in Edinburgh, Scotland. And I learned a lot about the fact that Scottish people and Arkansans are much alike. They are terribly, terribly proud of where they are from. <laughs> the difference between Scots and Arkansans, though, is that I found that the Scottish people really know the history of Scotland and, and, and go all the way back to the Battle of Culloden and, and the 1200s and everything. But the people in Arkansas don't know our history very well. And so that's why the things that are being done at the Butler Center and the Arkansas Studies Institute, thanks to David and Bobby Roberts and, and their wonderful staff, is, is going to change all of that. And I encourage you to look at the, your website for the Encyclopedia of Arkansas so that you can learn more about our state and learn, really, uh, if I had as much money as Alice Walton, <laughs> and I had the opportunity to build a museum. I'll tell you the museum I built. And that is the Museum of Arkansas Pride. Hmm. And it would be filled with things that people from Arkansas need to know and that children in particular need to be proud of about our state because there's a lot to be proud of. And uh, people, uh, you know, one thing that we've always learned uh, with her wonderful work with, uh, that we're given to do for the Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism is that once you get people to Arkansas, they love it. 
Before then, they don't know much about it. But, but once they come, they come back and back and back because of people like you and, and places like Arkansas and the things all over the state. Thanks. I'll now shut up. <laughs> well, that was a good speech. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. Yes, we On do. the New Hampshire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. You know, the internet certainly has been a lot to movie poster collecting, but there have always been options on, uh, of movie posters, even before, uh, and movie poster dealers, primarily in the big cosmopolitan uh, areas like uh, New York and L.A. and Atlanta and, and Chicago, and their movie poster shops and things. But, you know, I think that, that the Internet has been, and, and the books that have been published about movie posters have done a lot to educate people about it and to realize, you know, at what level they can invest and, and buy movie posters and, and that, you know, uh, that you can also, uh, one of the fascinating things about the Internet today is that there are so many movie posters that are of movies being made today that you can buy, you know, uh, and for like nineteen dollars. So if you want to, if you want to go get the Chipmunks or you want to go get, you know, Hugo or whatever, you can get them and and put them up. One thing I do with the movie posters in my house that you might want to do in your house is I change out the posters, trying to on a monthly basis. So one month it may be just cowboy movie posters. Uh, we just took down all the Christmas movie posters. You know, so they're wonderful decorating things that can be done with movie posters. Even if you just have a little home theater and you could put up three of them, I encourage you to do that and just change them out. Because people love the movies. Movies are memories. And, uh, you know, we can, you know, I could just mention the name of a movie and in a half a second and you would remember the movie and, and remember a lot about it, two hour, a two-hour adventure that you had in the dark. But uh, hopefully there will be a lot of other movies that are made in Arkansas, like End of the Line, like uh, the movie that Vincent Salaco made up in War Eagle, Arkansas in 2009. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it's amazing how many films for television, uh, not just for the domestic market, but with the foreign market are made. And uh, of course, the great development in filmmaking over the past 20 years has been the independent filmmaker. And it's just not the, the people who are making films for the studios, Paramount, Warner Brothers, MGM, Republic, etc. But it's people who are putting money, money into movies. And, uh, of course, they're making a lot of money in foreign distribution, but also a lot in uh, DVD sales hmm. today. Um, so, um, you know, you just, uh, anybody wants to make a movie? Gary Jones would be happy to make one for you for a million dollars. <laughs> we have several oh, yeah. things in cabinets in addition to the posters on the walls. We have some of uh, memorabilia from Ron's collection, including some wonderful Lum and Abner things. But also, uh, Skip Rutherford loaned us a great collection of caricatures of Ron drawn by Jim Johnson. And uh, they, they, uh, if you've uh, uh, not been over there, take a look at those. There's a little explanation about them. They, they talk about Ron's mania for writing thank you notes. Uh, we'll probably, several of us will I'll get write thank, thank you notes to everyone. Uh, you'll all get one next week. Uh, but also his uh, passion of, uh, for Arkansas, and they're, they're really funny. They're in the alcove in the, in the gallery. Thank you for mentioning that. You can buy cardboards with plastic sleeves at a company called Bags Unlimited. And they, uh, I really recommend that you pre preserve them flat like that in a heated space, dry, uh, and, and uh, have the mylar plastic over them. Uh, and, uh, you know, you just line them up and, you know, depending on how many, I mean, uh, 100 movie posters on 
stored like that could be put into an area about like that size. And uh, uh, you'd be surprised at uh, once you you start, I bet you can't eat just one. (laughs) It's that kind of thing. And the other, the other thing is, this is like stamp collecting. You know, you don't have to collect everything in the world. You just want to maybe collect cowboy posters. Or you might want to collect science fiction. Or you might just want to collect Alan Ladd movies. And that's, that, that, that kind of topical collecting helps narrow your interest and, and means that you could really go for collecting all of that. I have 15,000 one sheets, okay. <laughs> uh, which um, you know makes me one of the most compulsive guys. In our <laughs> you know, uh, it, uh, it's either that, uh, the, the, either I'm compulsive, or I'm the guy who could never say no. <laughs> and um, but I've really enjoyed them, and people enjoy them. And, um, you know, if Bobby Roberts and David Strickland are real good to me, <laughs> they might wind up with some posters in the collection of the Butler Center. But I'm not making any promises, because uh, I'm not planning to live at least, leave until at least December 21st this year. <laughs> okay. Well, on behalf of the Central Arkansas Library System and Bobby Roberts and all our colleagues at CALS and my colleagues in the Butler Center, uh, we appreciate you and thank you for saying yes to our invitations to do this today. Ron Robinson.